Now is the East Coast Surfing Hall of Fame is proud to induct Atlantic Beach's Bill Hickson. Bill Hickson grew up in Daytona Beach and decided to relocate to Neptune Beach in the spring of 64, bringing 25 surfboards inside a panel truck. He leased a spot on First Street next to Jim and Red's barber shop and opened up a surf shop. It was perfect timing. The beach bat boys were singing and catching about catching a wave and sitting on top of the world. And all over the sleepy beach towns east of Jacksonville, kids were deciding to do just the same thing. Former team member Mitch Kaufman tells the story. He was a mentor to hundreds of kids at the beach. His store was a refuge. If the surf was up, everybody went surfing. If the surf was flat, everybody was hanging out at Hickson's. He laid the groundwork for what this surf town is today, and without a doubt, he was the godfather of surfing in the Jacksonville Beach area. Hickson's run in the surfing business lasted 26 years, which was long enough for him to become a legend in the Jacks Beach's surfing community. For years, surfers from Hickson's surf teams traveled up and down the East Coast and out to California competing in contests, often with the shop owner himself at the wheel. Hickson's surf team members over the years reads like a who's who of Jack's Beach legends. Hickson closed his old shop in 1990. He told the Jacksonville Times Union then that times at the venerable Neptune Beach shop were getting tough. His quote was, I think I'm an institution here, but I had no intention of losing this store. But then nothing lasts forever. Although Bill left us in 2012, his legacy lives on through the influence he had on so many surfers in the Jacks Beach area. One of the truly iconic pioneer shop owners on the East Coast, Bill Hickson, and his son is here to accept on his behalf. <laughs> Jerry Hickson. Oh, thank you. It's, uh, it's an honor to be here uh, accepting this for my father. It uh, feels a little weird um, accepting an honor for his life work. I wish he could be here to receive it himself. Um, he passed 10 years ago. I wish he were here because uh, you would have loved him. Uh, this, this room is his element, I believe, and uh, he'd had a great time with you guys. It was a lot of fun, uh, loved people, and if you wanted to give great hugs, uh, you, you'd have loved being around my old man. He was fun. Um, it was fun going surfing with him. I always loved surfing with him. Uh, you, if you went out surfing with Bill Hickson, you got all the waves you wanted. No problem. But he always got the wave. And uh, that was his style. You go out surfing with him, he would paddle way out past the lineup, man. Like, it was almost comical at times, but he was always rewarded. And uh, every time that big set came in, he'd get his pick of the wave. And he'd ride that thing all the way to shore while the rest of us were caught inside, you know, just struggling with the white water. Uh, that was his style, and I love that about him. Um, I have no idea what he'd say, so uh, I had some time to uh, kind of reflect on his life for the first time in the last 10 years, really, and it was nice. As you heard in the bio, he was kind of like a man of first, you know, the first store uh, surf shop in the state of Florida, running up the East Coast uh, in the late 60s just to paddle out and spread the stoke, uh, whether it was taking uh, teams of kids out to to the NSA Nationals, NSSA Nationals, back uh, when, when few were doing that. Um, or even the Hickson's Pro-Am back in the 80s when he had the first uh, pro-sanctioned event in the state of Florida. That was a lot of fun. I do think he'd be stoked to see Mr. Slater here. Um, I, I'll bet that was his first time uh, surfing in a pro event back then. It was a lot of fun. He was little, the waves were even smaller, and he was shredding it. So I'm stoked to see you here, man. Thanks. Um, but. What I want you to know about my old man is uh, what, what I got to see on the back end with the surf shop. Uh, he was great at building community. Like I said, he was doing firsts and bringing things together. And as you heard Mitch's quote, uh, if you weren't in the water, you were at his store. And, uh, but I always noticed that he, he used that store to bring people together. He always, I, lo I love to always tell people that he always had somebody working in that store that maybe didn't fit in in their own minds. Uh, he, could, he could see when people kind of needed help, and his place was the place to be. And there was always somebody there who, 
maybe there was anything from just being socially awkward to maybe a, a disability, but somehow they didn't fit in and he would give them a chance. He was always about giving people chances. I remember one time we had this blind kid working there. It was back in the 70s. I don't know how he thought a blind kid could work retail in the 70s, but he was our best register guy ever. He was an inventory slayer, and he would paddle out and just listen for people paddling to catch the waves. I mean, he was amazing. So um, he, just, he just needed a chance, man. And that's what my father, he always gave people chances. And I, I really, I love that about him. I want you guys to know that about him. Uh, he was special, and I feel, I feel really honored to, uh, to accept this for him. Um, I couldn't possibly come up here with, without saying thanks and mentioning somebody. I don't even, I don't even think I'd be here right now. Um, there's nobody who's, who's done more to carry on in, in his, uh, his, his life and his legacy than, than Mitch Kaufman. And uh, yeah, he's awesome, guys. Um, Mitch, I love you. I know my father's honored today. I know he appreciates all you do for him, and, and I do too. And uh, you, you've always got a seat at my table, brother. I love you. Thanks so much, guys.